Welcome back, fellow Typospheroids. Are you bored sitting at home? Have you exhausted the entire Netflix catalog? Have you come to the end of YouTube? You just dying to do something, anything to take your mind off the sheer boredom of being stuck at home? Well, I have a project for you. Stay tuned. So many of you who are typewriter aficionados use some form of correction when you're making mistakes. Now I know nobody makes mistakes out there, certainly not me, but in theory, if you did, you could use a variety of techniques. First of all, with the right kind of paper, you could use one of these typewriter erasing pencils with the handy little brush that will put the crumbs of the eraser into the mechanism of the typewriter and ruin the typewriter. You could do that. You could also slide the carriage over and do it off the edge of the typewriter. You could use some form of whiteout. This is uh, Presta Pentel's version. It's a whiteout pen. It's a liquid correction and a little pen. Or you could use more commonly what I typically use is correction tape. Now, if you happen to be a fan of thermal typewriters like I am, uh, the first time you ever tried correcting a mistake on a thermal typewriter, you may have tried it like putting correction tape over it and then realize, oh, correction tape isn't thermally sensitive. Yeah, they don't make thermal correction tape. Now, you might be asking yourself, Joe, have you had too much coffee? And the answer would be, I don't think there is such a thing. But the other thing you might be asking is, Joe, if these thermal typewriters have a liquid crystal display enabling you to correct uh, your entry before it gets printed on paper, why would you ever make a mistake that needed to be covered up afterwards? And the answer is, oftentimes when you're nearing the edge of your line on the right side of the page, which is usually where the end of the line is, <clears throat> uh, and you get into the so-called hot zone, you might uh, hurriedly hit a space after making a typo and not having enough time to stop, once you hit the space, it automatically does a automatic carriage return if you're in that auto carriage return mode. So occasionally you will make a mistake. You don't have to attribute the mistake to yourself. You can blame it on something else like the machine, right? But a mistake will, be, will happen. It won't be your fault. You don't have to live with that. But we're going to talk about how to cover these mistakes up. So what I've done is I'll typically white out the error afterwards. Like when I'm done with the page, I will white out the error and I get some kind of a pen, uh, typically a black pen that kind of matches somewhat the density of the thermal printing on the rest of the page. And I'll just write in by hand a correction. And that works okay, but it's obvious it's been corrected, right? By hand. So what I'm going to attempt to do today is we're going to make thermal correction strips. And I call these chads, thermal correction chads. So to do this, you're going to need a thermal typewriter in order, in order to actually do it. You don't need to have a thermal typewriter to actually just make these chads, but it's not going to do any good making them not to be able to use them. So some kind of a thermal typewriter that you're fairly well familiar with. You're going to need some scotch brand or equivalent double-sided transparent tape. This is the half-inch wide variety. They also make a three-quarter inch, and I like the half-inch better. You'll need some wax paper, right? Wax paper, a pair of scissors, one sizz, one sizz isn't going to do it. You need two sizzes, which is a scissor. Oh, you'll need thermal paper. Of course, thermal paper. So I happen to have this fairly thick thermal paper that is a brother brand. It comes in a pack. I bought it online, and this is the thermal side. So I just need some strips a couple inches wide. I'm going to just cut some thermal paper off the margin of this piece of paper and use it for our little project. Okay, let's get started. So we're going to start our little project by taking a piece of wax paper and cutting it off the roll. This rough size, just a few inches on a side, doesn't have to be exact. It doesn't even have to be that neat, although uh, in the later steps of this process, neatness does count. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my scotch or equivalent brand of double-sided adhesive tape. This is a half inch wide. I think the half inch works the best. I'm going to pull off a piece that's like roughly an inch to two inches, maybe inch and a half long, and I'm going to try to neatly stick it in the middle of this piece of wax paper, just like that. Okay, the third thing we're going to do is try to cut a piece of thermal paper that's the same width, like a half inch wide, and the same length. It won't be exact, of course, 
but we'll try to do our best. And so you might have the question now as to how can you tell the thermal side of the paper? And the easy answer to that is if you can scratch it with a sharp object on a hard surface and make a little gray mark like I did right there in the corner, that up, upside is the thermal side. I'm going to take this paper and we're going to stick it right to that double-sided tape like that, okay? The next step is I'm just going to trim it so I have the wax paper oriented thusly. So I have my piece of thermal paper stuck to the wax paper and I have a little bit of extra wax paper sticking on either side. You can trim that down to roughly three quarters of an inch or maybe one and a half centimeters on either side like that, okay? Get rid of all that stuff. Okay, here you go. Now, the last, almost the last step is I'm going to carefully trim this piece right down the middle of the thermal paper. And it's going to give me two halves like that, okay? So each of these could function right now as a chad, a thermal correction strip, I should say. But in actual use, what you're going to want to do for correcting individual letters is you're going to want to trim these into single letter size widths. And this, it depends upon what size font, but most of them are like 10 characters per inch. So you just want to kind of trim these like this. And you don't necessarily have to trim the whole piece. You could leave a, a section here for if you had to uh, correct an entire word. Instead of just a single letter, you could leave a longer piece like this. Okay, and you could choose a little metal tin like this Sucrets tin, and you could put all your little correction chads in there, for instance. Okay, I have a piece of fresh thermal paper to test this on. Let's go ahead and feed it into the EP43 Brother Thermal Typewriter. Well, I'm going to start by typing a line of text, and it doesn't really matter how good or bad it is. And I'm going to do a carriage return after my line, like that. So it will finish the line, it'll advance, I'm set to single line spacing, so it's going to advance one full line. And okay, let's assume now that I made a mistake on here and I want to correct it. Well, you can either use your platen knob, if it is a ratcheting platen knob, if it's not a ratcheting platen knob, you want to use your paper up down buttons. And I'm going to raise the paper so that the, current, the line I just finished, which has the error on it, is going to be raised up to the erasing table. I'm going to go up about eight half spaces. So each of the button presses is a half space. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there's my line of text right there on the erasing table that it gives me a convenient place for uh, applying the chat. Now, because I'm such a great typist, I didn't actually make an error. Even when I intend on making errors, I don't. That's how great I am. But we'll just pretend like I made an error in one of these. Let's say the X, for instance. And I'm going to try to apply the chad over the letter X. So let's get the chads out of the box here. I'll get one of these, like this. And uh, by the way, I probably trim these a little too wide, so I'm going to just trim this one down maybe a little narrower. You can use a pair of tweezers, it's probably the best idea, or you can use a thin blade screwdriver. Peel it off, attempt to peel it off with the knife blade. I want to have the chad stick to the blade, like that. And then I want to carefully apply the tape over the error. And the neatness does count here. Okay, there you are. Not too bad, right? Okay, so if you remember, I started one line below the errant line and I raised it up eight half spaces. So what we want to go now is we want to down ten half spaces. I'm in the single line spacing. If I go back down eight half spaces, it'll take me back down to the line below the error, but I want to go further. I want to take it all the way down so this line is at the print position. Since I'm in the single line spacing, it'll be two additional half spaces for 10 total. If you're in the one and a half line spacing, you would go 11 spaces down. If you're in the double line spacing, you would go 12 half spaces. So let's go down 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
8, 9, 10. Okay, the next thing I want to do is I want to go out of the auto mode and go to line by line mode. And by using my second shift with the space bar or the backspace key, I can move the print position directly. So second shift and space bar. And I'm going to actually go back one. And I'll hit my letter X is the correction. And then I'm going to hit a carriage return. And it should print it, and it will do a carriage return. And now I'm back to the line below the errant line, ready to continue with my normal typing. And I'm going to set the machine back up to the auto mode, get out of the line by line mode. So I'm now back in my normal automatic carriage return mode. The letter X has been corrected over fairly neatly. Not too bad, eh? Now you also might find it handy to keep uh, a longer section of your correction tape uh, handy so you can perhaps cover up an entire word at a time. And if you have a tiny pair of scissors, folding scissors, in your little tin, your little correction kit, you could just cut this to the right width. By the way, this little technique uh, requires you to become a little adept at the intricacies of operating your typewriter, your thermal typewriter, in the various modes. Uh, getting out of the auto carriage return mode and getting into the character by character mode where you can move your print position manually and also being familiar with how to move the uh, line spacing up and down half lines at a time. As I indicated earlier, some of the machines like this uh, brother, the manual platen knob is a continuous knob. It doesn't have a ratchet, so I don't want to use that to move my print position. Other machines like your Canon Type Stars will have a click knob. Each click is a half space, so or half line space. In the case of these kind of machines that don't have a clicking uh, ratcheting platen knob, you want to use your powered up down buttons. Each press is a half line. You're going to need probably your owner's manual if your machine didn't come with one, or look for a manual online. They're generally available. It's a good opportunity in this little crafty project to get to know your thermal typewriter a little bit better. Well, you're probably thinking, Joe, this is kind of a fiddly little procedure. It, it's not really conducive to writing. You have to stop and do all this fiddling around it. Yeah, I agree. This is a less than polished easy to do procedure. It's still experimental. And that's what this whole thing is. I had thought about it quite a while ago, but it wasn't until last week when I was watching a YouTube video by fellow typospheroid uh, Gregory Short. He was reviewing the Brother EP5, which is a later version of the EP series thermal typewriter, and it doesn't have a liquid crystal display at all. But while I was watching that video, I started getting inspired to uh, work again on this uh, idea of thermal correcting strips, and I ended up sketching this kind of bizarre drawing about uh, how you might be able to use double-sided tape, wax paper, and thermal paper to make these correction strips. And so I'll leave a link down below to Gregory's review of the EP5. But thanks a lot, Gregory, for inspiring me to uh, work on this little idea again. But what do you guys think? Is there a more practical way to do this than what I'm doing? Uh, first of all, I think tweezers would be better than the little jeweler screwdriver or knife blade, right? So your little uh, little Altoids tin or metal, whatever this is, Sucrets, whatever little container you use to keep these chads in, you probably want to have a little set of small tweezers, maybe one of those tiny little metal folding scissors that will fit in here and you can cut the chads to size as you need them, perhaps. Or is there some other idea that you have? Can you take something like a roll of tape or a roll of correction tape or something? Could you, could you put these on that? And, you know, so it would take some ingenuity, obviously. But you guys, some of you guys out there are pretty ingenious already. So I'd love to hear from you. Leave a comment down below. Let's have a dialogue about, is there a way to make this kind of crude little crafty project a little more practical for a thermal typewriter so you could apply thermal correction tape and print over it thermally. I'd love to hear your ideas. Leave a comment down below if you have any ideas. Love to hear from you regardless. And in this time of uncertainty, I wish you guys the best. Stay safe, stay healthy, and above all, stay creative. Have yourselves a great day. Bye-bye.